Hello everybody, it's the Farm Sim Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to have a quick look at Auto Drive. This is uh, specifically for you guys who are maybe new to the game or haven't used Auto Drive before. A lot of the functionality is the same as it was in FS19. So if you've used it before, uh, there shouldn't be anything that you don't already know here. Although there are a few new little things that I've spotted in Auto Drive which are worth checking out. Now we have set ourselves up on a very basic map here. I've done a little course because I think it helps. Just show the fundamentals of how you set up auto drive courses for yourself but one of the new really good features in uh, auto drive for fs22 is the fact that it takes the splines from the traffic if they exist in the map it takes them and converts them to auto drive courses so you will see this little message pop up if you are on any of the base game maps at the moment and if you do see that i strongly recommend you hit the yes uh, option because it'll save you a whole heap of time setting up your own tracks and courses. And after we've uh, had a little bit of a play around on here, I will jump into one of the other maps and just show you the, the depth and the detail of those courses, and you'll understand literally hundreds of hours that you will save by hitting that yes button. Now, it's not going to be on every map. Some of the mod maps may choose not to put a full road network in or all the road traffic splines in, um, so we'll just have to wait and see. But I fully expect it'll be something that'll come with some uh, mod maps, so we can look forward to uh, saving ourselves a lot of time setting up courses in the future. But you're still going to want to edit them. You're still going to add uh, additional routes to them. So that's what this is really about today is me showing you some of the basics and how we get through it. So I've got myself a couple of tractors and trailers here just ready for us to demo things. So let's jump in the Massey here and you'll see straight away that the auto drive menu is here. Uh, and what I've done there, I've pressed my middle mouse button which brings up the cursor. So usually you use your mouse to pan around the tractor. Uh, if you press your middle mouse button, you'll see your cursor appears. And that means then that you can click and move your auto drive menu around and about. Now, uh, one of the options that you can do here is click onto the cog there, and there's your settings. There are quite a few settings in here. Now, what I want to do at the moment is keep these to a minimum. So uh, this first menu here, I don't worry about this too much at the moment. This is very much for when you're doing uh, courses that link up with course play so we think about forage harvesting or we think about combines something like that uh, so we probably don't need to touch anything in there today because we're going to come back to those in a, a second video showing some of the more advanced features of uh, auto drive but for now what we're going to do is we'll leave that for today and I'll, I'll walk you through some of the basics so you can set your own courses up and get started now the second menu there are a few options in here you might be interested in certainly for me uh, one of the most important ones I find when I'm setting up courses is line height. Uh, uh, the default is set to ground level, uh, and I'll explain in a little minute why uh, that isn't very handy. So I want to move that to above tractor, and I, I mean, entirely up to you, but I would strongly recommend that you do that. Uh, other than that, um, nothing really else to show. I'm going to switch wide HUD on here just so you can see the difference, and I'm also going to bump up the scale uh, purely for the purposes of this video so that you guys can see very clearly what I'm doing in the navigation while I'm doing it. So we'll bump it up to 200% there. But normally I would leave it small and uh, keep it uh, out of the way. So let's hit apply there and there we go. We've got a rather large menu there at the moment so we'll just drop that down here. Um, now if you want to get rid of this menu at any point the default is left alt and number pad zero and it gets rid of it and you just press that again to bring it back up. Of course if you want to change that keybind you can do that through the keybinds menu as well. So what we've got is our Massey Ferguson here with the trailer on. We've got nothing in the trailer at the moment uh, and what we're going to do before we do anything else is we're just going to set up a very basic course. Um, so I'm going to pull the tractor onto the road here like so. Um, and we're going to go through some of the menu options that we've got in our in our HUD here. So first and foremost, um, we have got our settings that we were in just there, the cog. Uh, we have got start, stop, or enable and disable uh, auto drive. Now we haven't got anything at the moment to enable or disable because we haven't set in any courses, but we'll do that in a minute. And we've got some different modes to use. This is basically drive from point to point. Uh, the next one is pick up materials from a certain point, uh, unload them at a different point, uh, and you can then choose uh, what you want to pick up as well. So if you've got a silo with multiple things in the silo, uh, you can choose the ones you want. Uh, 
Uh, the following one is just a deliver mode, so if you've got a trailer full of stuff you can sig uh, signify a point that you want to deliver it to. Uh, and the other one is drive from a point to a place and load up. So you can set that to do that as well. And the final one here is unload combine, which we won't touch on today because, like I said, it's slightly more advanced, um, so it deserves a video on its own. If you can't wait, though, I have already done a video for that for FS19, and I would say the principles for that are almost identical. So uh, if you want to check that out in the meantime, by all means do. Uh, otherwise, there will be another video coming out very shortly. Uh, I think the reason I'm not doing it now is because Courseplay very much still in development. I think we'll wait for Courseplay to be a little bit more advanced before we uh, jump into that one. Now, if we click it again, it takes us back to our go to specific point mode. Uh, this one here allows you to skip through different settings. So, for example, on this one here, you've got two options here. You can skip forward or backwards between one of your two routes. So uh, if you're on the first point, if you click on this, it will move it to the second point. We'll demonstrate that in a little while. Um, these can adjust your speeds. Again, the combine one will ignore for now. But this one here, if you mouse a wheel over that, you can adjust the speed of your vehicle, um, obviously running it at the maximum is what we're going to do because we're on the roads but if you want to run it at a slower speed you can do that and then if you've got a loop if you've got a course set up here where you're picking stuff up and unloading it somewhere else let's like say you've got a, a grain bin with a million litres of uh, uh, wheat in it um, and you've got a truck that's running from that silo all the way to the cell point and back it's going to take a few routes to do that so you can then increase or decrease the amount of uh, uh, repetitions it does of that uh, rather than having to just click on it every time you want to and finally the end point here this triangle this warning triangle here if you click on that that takes you into edit mode which brings up all of these other options so let's look through those very very quickly as well uh, the record button there i think is pretty self-explanatory if you hit the record button you start to record a course um, and again you press it to turn it off um, the the classic 1.44 uh, little disk there is to save any of the courses you've set up uh, this is to create an edit targets so you will set certain points on your courses where you want the track to go to uh, or stop at um, this one here allows you to delete waypoints individually and again I'll, we'll touch on that ever so slightly uh, and here we can edit selected targets as well so if you've got a name for something you want to change the name of it we can do that as well so um, that is an overview of all the items again uh, just here next to the uh, x there um, which if you close it again you use your left control and zero on your numpad to pull it back up if you click on the two arrows here you've got some useful commands uh, to remind you what you need to do which is quite helpful um, but without further ado let's jump in and what i'm going to do i'm just going to switch it at the moment to a single looping course um, so we want it on the the most basic um, direction mode there and we are going to we're already in edit mode here so we are going to hit the record button and as you see there we get an icon above our tractor now if you remember back to before when i clicked on the cog um, and we went into here uh, and we set the line height to above tract that is what it does now if i put that to ground level again and just show you you can see that icon is still there hidden under the tractor let me just turn edit mode back on it is under the tractor but it's hidden so it's i find it a lot easier to have that above the tractor um it just helps me being able to see what i can see so there it is um so there we go what we're going to do now we're going to drive away here and as you can see as we drive it adds different waypoints in and what we're going to do we're going to go drive down to the end here and we're going to loop round have to make this a uh, makeshift roundabout because what i want to do i'm trying to keep this course compact at the moment just so we're not having to sit for hours and wait for tractors to get to and from places so again we'll run back down the opposite side of the road here and we'll run to the other roundabout at the other end and then we'll join these up and one of the things that uh, I was told when I first got into auto drive and how to treat this and I've, I've taken this with me everywhere since and I think it's a brilliant bit of advice is to treat auto drive like it's a train track 
So everything really needs to link up. You can create a master route or a main line if you want. And then you have spurs or different tracks that go off of that. But what it means then is that everything is hooked up and everything can join on to everything else. Um, so that was a brilliant piece of advice and I've always taken that with me and it's really helped me when I've been setting up courses. So here we are. We are back now to virtually the start of our course. And what I'm going to do here, uh, again, I'm going to press the middle mouse button. And what we do is click on here and you hear it bleep and it's changed to green. And we're going to click on the next uh, icon down here. And that has joined our course up and completed it. So there we go. Now what we haven't done yet is um, put any waypoints in. Um, so this at the moment will do nothing. You can't send any tractors anywhere. On this. So if I turn this off for a second, you see I have no waypoints here uh, because all I've done is set up a track on the road. So what I'm going to do now is um, set up a first waypoint. Now I've turned record off, so it's not going to keep drawing um, uh, nodes as we turn around but what I'm going to do I'm going to create a spur off this uh, this path here now you can see the red line um, that's bouncing off the top of the tractor there that will always jump to the nearest uh, uh, node so the tractor's nearest the nearest node that's the one it'll it'll select so if you don't want it what it'll try and do is connect it straight away now that's another setting that you can fix by jumping into the menu and we can go to our global settings which is the third menu down here uh, auto connect start yes and auto connect end no what it's best to do is have both of those set to no and then you have a little bit more control over how you do things and I'll show you why that is good in a minute this is one of the new features of FS22 auto drive which I really like so uh, we're going to turn into this little car park here uh, and I'm going to hit the record button so again it showed us uh, a new node here and you can see it's got the cross above it because it's not connected to anything we're going to drive around here like so and we're going to drive around the other tractor here and we're going to drive out of here. Now what I want to do when I get to here, in fact I'm going to use that one that's further back, it might have dropped me another node there, is what I want to do here um, is turn back onto the road. So I, again as before, now we can hit the stop button if we want there, I click on here. Now before I click on this one, this is one of the new features which I love, before I click on this, this is the node I want to go to. Now that, that you see is a very straight line and it cuts me across the grass, not very elegant. Now if I use my scroll wheel on my mouse, you can see it actually feathers that turn and turns it into a much nicer radius for the turn. So that will line me up a lot nicer for the road on the way out. Now when I'm happy with that, I hit my left mouse button. And it creates those uh, nodes for me, which is fantastic. So um, I'm going to leave him there like that. Uh, what we'll need to do as well is do the same at the other end. So again, I click on here. You can't really see it very well here, but I'm doing the same thing with the scroll wheel and connected up a course there. So we now have a course with a start and stop point. So um, if I reverse slightly here, you can see the red line again going to the nearest node we're going to call this let's put him here we're going to give that a node park space one there we go so now that tractor is in park space one now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to roll him forward slightly and as you can see um, this is a one-way course you can tell by the green arrows on the lines there this is a one-way course um, now because we're ahead of where park space one is on the nodes it's connecting to the nearest node it can so if i hit enable disable now he will go through this entire route and bring himself back to park space one so if i click on that there you go he is pulled away it says driving to destination it's giving you the time it's going to take him a minute and 13 10 seconds so that's looking good now um I've left the course up here, of course, any point you can click this button here to turn it off uh, and you will see that uh, it has disappeared. We have got show next point on at the moment, which is this white line above the tractor which flashes to the next point. At any point you can turn that off if you want to. 
um, by going up to here and showing next path turn that to no I tend to do that because I don't really think it adds anything uh, but again we can click on the triangle to turn things back on um, and we will run down to the end here and as you can see he's going to work out we've got a spur off here but he knows park space one is on this little spur so he is going to pull off here and he's going to pull round to park space number one and when he gets there we will get a little notification there we go driver of mf8s has reached park space one so now we know how to add points to a course let us add a second one so uh, what we want to do the same principle applies here find the closest node that we want uh, we're going to pull into here and we're going to start a new course so again middle mouse button so we can hit the record button because we haven't got this set up um, to link to the nearest node because we switched that off we can pull forward I'm going to pull forward one here and then I'm going to connect these and again using my scroll wheel on my mouse to make that turn a little bit more uh, um, smooth we will then roll forward and we want to roll over where we want to load or unload now tip here this is a really important one um, always roll further past where you want to go than so if I stopped here for example uh, and, and targeted that or tagged that even if we go for another node so even if I did that there's, very, there's a lot of potential that it may stop short um, so I tend to run it a little bit further past so even that point there and let's call this let's call this silo one um, and it doesn't matter that your point is past uh, where you would ideally want to tip or load certainly it's past the load point you could still tip into that uh, because auto drive will detect when it rolls over this trigger and stop automatically so it's better to have it running slightly past than uh, running short and you're the end edge of your trailer not being over the tip point or the load point so that's a tip i've picked up over the years now that is done so we can roll forward now and we can get back to the main course so again again i'm going to stop here middle mouse button again I'm going to click on my last point here and I'm going to click on this point here again scroll wheel to uh, set you a nice curve as you pull back onto the road before you click your left mouse button to join it back on so that's done now we have two points so I can now send uh, my Massey I want to stop recording that's a really bad habit I've got and I'm sure some of you also will have done that if you've used auto drive before very easy to forget to um, turn off the record button uh, so record button off what I'm going to do now is send him back to park space one using our um, direct drive course but when I get there we're going to do something slightly different so let's send him on his way as you can see he's joining back up to the other course now we'll let him run around and uh, when he pulls up in his parking space we will set up another course And there he is back at his park space one so we're going to use this opportunity now to create a second course so what we want to do now is we are going to use so as you can see now silo one appears in your options here uh, we are going to use a different course so we're going to click on this one where it's drive mode at the moment what we're going to do um, is we're not going to use this one because this is pick up and deliver what we want and um, we don't want deliver either what we want is load so we're at park space one at the moment but we are going to load at silo one and we're going to load wheat so what it'll do now it will go to silo one it will load up with wheat and then it'll wait so let's just turn the on button and as you can see he's off on his course you can see the destination he's heading to next uh, is highlighted in green there so he'll whip around here um, and he will roll over to the silo if we've done this right so he's pulled into the course there and as you see as he gets close automatically the cover comes off the trailer and he rolls under his destination so you can see silo one our point there where we set our target but you can see where he stopped there to fill the trailer up so he has done it 
uh, where we wanted him to. So again, like I said, really good to make sure that he's uh, he's done that. Um, and now he's off on his course again, and he will head back to Park Space One, where he will um, park up and wait for his next instruction. So there he goes, back to his parking spot. He has got a full load of grain in there. So, uh, what are we going to do now, though? I think what we need to do here is um, unload our full load of grain at the second grain silo. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the second tractor now, because also what I want to do here is show how you can run multiple different vehicles at the same time. So what we're going to do here, we'll call this park space um, two, shall we? Um, so let's record. Let's instantly call this park space two. There we go. And he's going to go the other direction. So we want him to come around here. Now I click on here and I will hook that up to there. Uh, and he has joined the course. So I don't need to do any more editing just now because I'm happy that he is already joined to the existing route. So he's going to run down here. But here is our second point. So what I'm going to do here is again we're going to we're going to turn in here. Now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to create because this is a narrow road. I am going to create a two-way course, uh, and the reason for that is that um, we can then have two tractors going both ways here. We don't have to squeeze two lines next to each other. As you can see on the road here, loads of space to have uh, one going one way and one going the other. But in this little spot here, we don't have the ability to do that. Now, what you want to do, my word of advice one th with two-way courses, is to keep them as short as possible. Because what will happen if somebody was in here wanting to come out and somebody was on the road wanting to come in, they will give each other right of way. Now, if that road is very, very long, it will take ages for one of them to wait, and they'll be waiting for ages. Whereas if it's just a short spot, one can get out of the way before the other one arrives. So, um, the difference here, instead of left click when you hit the record button, you press right click, and you can see you've got a little purple dot there this time. Um, and we're going to pull forward, and you're going to see there you've got blue lines rather than green ones. Now, I'm only going to do two, um, two nodes there. That's all I need to do. Actually, it's three, including the start one. Um, that's all I'm going to do in that two-way course. And then I'm going to click the right mouse button again to stop that. Uh, I'm going to pull forward slightly to about here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to hit record but press the left mouse button again. So we're back now onto our two-way course. And as you can see now, I will steer around, get under my silo point. Same principle as before. Let's roll further forward than we need to be, so we don't cause ourselves any problems. Again, middle mouse button if you need to pan around. So I'm happy that that is a decent place. I will call this silo 2. There we go. And then we will continue this course around back to our two-way course. And what we're going to do now is we're going to join these back up. So if I click on here, and again, middle mouse button scroll, we set that up that way so it joins back on. Shallow it down a little bit. Click the button. Uh, and again, this one, I'm going to click from here to here. Scroll wheel again just to soften that off. There we go. And now if you want to move any of these, so if you see what I've done here, uh, that one's going quite straight. So if I press my right mouse button now, I can move that. So I'm adjusting that slightly to make things work a little bit better. But there we go. can adjust those as you see fit. But there we go. So we roll forward slightly here. And what we want to do now is join up 
our course as well going this way so we came in from that side uh, to here so that is where we want to put our, our steer and there we go so that works now well but also on the way out on the last one of these nodes we also want it to go to here don't we so we've got a two-way course coming in there so we can go both ways we can come down the way and drive in or we can drive out and head back the way we came now if you really want to here you could add another one in here again use a scroll wheel so you can come at it from either direction which is quite a handy thing to have and again you could head out either direction here so I could go here and head out in either direction and like I said you now start to see it's like a junction on a railway track where you've got different directions coming in in one place so again play around with that get comfortable with that um, make sure that you uh, feel comfortable and you don't have to do that straight away you can do one bit at a time you don't have to do all of those connections in one go um, but just build it up slowly as you see fit okay let's head back down here um, now here is our main route but there is park space too so at some point here I think what we want to do is peel off earlier so let's say we go here put ourselves a little marker there and we're going to roll round to here so again just click and join and if we spin around to here um, I'm actually going to move that back one to shallow off that join but I'm going to then click here and click here that didn't need to use the scroll wheel it's pretty straight smooth uh, route to go turn this off and we're right next to the point here if I click it should just move forward the one point and there we go so um, we've set up a course with one tractor but we're not going to use that tractor now because what we're going to do is we're going to use tractor one again so let's jump out of tractor two let's jump back into tractor one so what we're going to do now we're in tractor one again we're going to change our course type we are going to change it to um, unload and we're going to unload at silo 2 which is our furthest silo down there uh, so we're going to go there we go we'll let him do his thing we'll just follow him around so what he's going to do now because remember we filled him up from silo 1 with uh, a trailer full of wheat he's going to spin around here he will head down the track and he is going to not turn in there this time because he's on a different route so he's find, always finding the fastest or best route uh, to get there as quickly as possible so he's coming up to silo 2 here you can see he's slowing down slightly as he's working things out now if we set this up properly he should turn in here there we go joins the two-way network here back onto the one-way network he's uncovered the trailer straight away and again, because we moved our trigger point to behind or further away from the other side of the unload point, he shall hopefully roll over here. And the moment he finds the trigger with the trailer, he will start to unload. There we go. So we'll wait for that trailer to unload. And in fact, what we might do here, while he is unloading there, we will set up another course. In fact, we'll let him finish unloading first to avoid any issues. But what we're going to do is we're going to set both of them up now on a perpetual <laughs> loop of loading and unloading. So, there you go. He's finished his course now. He reached silo 2. He did his unload. The job is complete. Um, so, what we're going to do now, we're going to switch back to load and unload so we're going to load from silo one we're going to unload at silo two and we're going to unload wheat at both so if i hit the go button now he is going to do that um, i'm going to click on this button here and let's uh, make him do it a few times now while he's doing that and you can see him coming down the road here we are going to take tractor number two and we're going to set up exactly the same course for him so there we go we're going to load him at silo one and we're going to unload at silo two and we're going to hit go now he is going to get a head start now you notice tractor one has also taken park space two because it was the shortest route so what will actually happen here is they will queue up behind each other so the mccormack is ready is in place and he is going to load up 
and right behind him is the Massey. So what I'll do, I'll probably speed things up here because we'll watch both of these get ready and then we'll watch him run to the next silo. We'll not see the Massey fill up but we'll see him in the distance filling up as we pull away. So he's off now driving to the unload point. You'll see it's switched to silo 2 in green and the Massey there is pulling under the trigger. So what's going to be interesting here is now to see what will happen with our two-way course. So the McCormack goes into the unload point here. Massey has just about filled up there. So what will happen is it looks like they'll both get through the two-way course at the same time here. Nobody's going to have any issues with waiting because the McCormack's not going to be unloaded before the Massey arrives. But as you can see there, we are running quite a, uh, a smooth operation now. It's not taking us long to set that up. Excuse my camera there. Uh, there's the Massey pulling in. He's uh, taken his cover off as well, and he's just going to wait behind. So there we go. Now, what we're going to do now with the McCormack is we're going to we're going to flip this. So every time the Massey dumps a load in here. Um, we are going to unload it at the other silo. So there we go. So we'll send them off to silo 1. And the Massey will unload behind him. So you get the principle. I'm not going to run this video on for much longer, to be honest, because it's taken quite a lot of time. But... Um, I don't want you to have to sit through it. I will put timestamps in it all so you can jump to certain points which will find it useful for you. But I would suggest maybe if you've never used AutoDrive before, find yourself a quiet corner of a map. Just set up your own courses. Don't worry about anything else. Get your head around it. It is very easy once you once you get over the initial uh, stigma of all the buttons and not knowing what everything does, it is very straightforward. Um, so there we go. He's back on his route now. He Because he's empty though, what he will do now for silo 1 is probably just run straight through it and head over to silo 2. Now if he was full, he would um, he would head over there. I think. Let's see. Yes, as I suspected. I had to just remind myself then what was happening. But yes, because there was nothing in the trailer, he just rolls through and... Uh, heads back to get loaded up again, whereas the Massey over there is going to loop round and join in. Now, one last thing we're going to do before we finish the video is show you a reverse course, because again you can set these up uh, very easily to have a reverse course, so what we need is a third tractor. So here is our third tractor, it's a little New Holland, so what we're going to do here um, is we're going to do another little spur off here. Let's um, let's do it about here. What we don't want to do is avoid it, run into other stuff. In fact, what we'll do now. This is where the, you need to think about kind of potentially where things could get stuck or, or bump into each other. So what we're going to do here, we want this guy to come off here. So we'll do this. We'll hit record. He's going to pull off here, like so. And then all you need to do. There's no special uh, instruction. You just need to reverse back, like so. And when you're happy with where you are, you hit your stop point. So what we do now, stop recording, you can reverse back a little bit more and put your target in. Let's call this one parking space. Okay that. Um, now what we need to do is head over here and link it to the main route. Again, not sure that we need to uh, necessarily use the scroll wheel here. That's a pretty straightforward uh, element. So what we'll do now, I will pop him on the course somewhere. Hopefully where he's not going to get in people's way. And I will send him to the parking space. Let them connect to this one. There we go. Parking space. We'll hit go. And so he's going to head along here.
roll his way around here. He's going to park himself in the corner here to speed up a bit. It does run a little bit slow sometimes. Um, but there we go. He has reached parking space and he's happily stuck there. Until we move him next. And just to prove it doesn't always go to plan, um, we have got a little bit of a collision here. But they've stopped themselves before they get too um, close together. What we need to do is just adjust the course slightly to allow them more breathing space to turn might need to start them off again now but see how I'm just adjusting those little roots um, it looks like the McCormack is slightly wide on the turn there just at the point that the uh, the Massey was uh, coming in so he is just edging his way around now you see that and he is through there, and now he's through, the Massey can get on his way. So, yes, um, there's always a little bit of trial and error of these, especially when you've got more complex courses. Um, but there you go. Um, I think that's probably it for this episode. There is a lot more to do, but uh, this at least gives you a feel for how quickly you can get quite technical courses set up. Now, I did promise, didn't I, that I would go back at some point in this video and show you the network generation uh, ability of auto drive so like i said when you get this uh, message at the start of a new game or a save game uh, the option for me would be to hit yes and the reason for doing that is um, it uses the splines the traffic splines to create the auto drive network so you don't have to go through what we've just been through on a large scale across the entire map to set a course up now like i said before some mod maps won't necessarily have a full traffic spline network set up if they do brilliant you can use it if they don't so be it you might have to create some of your own courses but certainly we know for the base game maps um, they do and uh, it works very very well and this is what it looks like so here we are on elm creek and as you can see there is a very detailed network already existing now none of this was created by me this is already in the game using the traffic splines all it has happened is the auto drive has taken that and converted it into an auto drive course. So all of this work here that you see um, in FS19 would have had to be created by hand. But now we can utilize the traffic network to our advantage. Um, so a really, really brilliant addition to the game in FS22 and a real bonus. Now, of course, there are elements here like farms and farmyards that don't have courses. So you can build on these, of course. So we could just literally pull off here uh, and set up a new course, um, pull up the menu, uh, hit the record button. And there you go, creating a new element to the course around the roundabout here if we wanted to. Uh, but yes, it saves a lot of work putting a considerable amount of the pieces together. So um, there you go. Um, for me, the farm sim guy, I hope that was useful. There are going to be more of these coming as things develop and things change with uh, hopefully with course play. Uh, but I'll show you some of the other things that you can do with auto drive as we go along if you've got any questions please pop them in the comments below i can either cover some of them off with a YouTube, uh, with a short video um or we can pull together a much longer video if there's a lot of questions around the same points but for now from me i know this has been a long video but hopefully you found it useful thanks very very much for watching and i will see you all again very soon bye for now